thank you so much for joining us for our, our 50th anniversary. And um, we have, well, we'll talk about what we're going to do for this episode in a, in a second. I think most people are, are aware of what we're going to do, but we've got two more episodes left, uh, 51 and 52, and that takes us right to the end of November. So episode 52 is the last Thursday in November. And because 52 is a nice round number, and it's obviously the, the year exactly, we are then going to give ourselves a well-deserved break and we're having no pod chat live throughout December and we are going to then come back in the new year in 2019 and the plan here is for the episodes to no longer be weekly but to instead be monthly and uh, if no one is happy about that then of course we'll give you your money back uh, immediately. Um, the reality is that weekly is just getting a little bit difficult to sustain so two more episodes december off and then we're back monthly as of 2019 monthly plus maybe one or two in between episodes uh from various conferences that we were at and, and things like that but that's the plan for the future um episode 50 we want we weren't sure what to do we wanted to thank uh all the guests really because this show is nothing without the guests it's about them and, and very much not us so we invited all of them all 67 to come back on and luckily not all of them could make it because that would have been a bit too difficult to handle we've got we think last count somewhere between 35 and 40 although we've had a few last minute dropouts and we've asked them all to come back on just for a catch-up and a chat and um uh you know and maybe even a question each for them but like craig is going to be uh keeping a close eye on, on the time he doesn't want us to spend too long with, with with anyone just so that everyone's got time and we decided that i don't know people that watch regularly will know that every week we've got this little running joke of who's going to come on first craig and i always say who do we think because we when we're live we can see people coming on and we're, it's like who's going to come on first and and not only are these two guys battling it out for for first place pretty much week in week out but to my knowledge they're the names that pop up on our screen and have done for pretty much 50 weeks um and that is uh toby toby blanford and james welsh or jw as he was now be referred to so we decided it would be nice to get these two chaps on and let them co-host it with us essentially let them speak to the experts. So we're going to bring the experts in one by one and I'll quickly just say hi, Craig and I will say hi and we'll remind ourselves which episode they did for us. And then we're going to hand over to these two gents. Um, and I think Craig's going to pull them in at some point uh, soon and we'll say hi to them. We're going to, um, so James is there, but Toby, your video seems to have stopped. <laughs> well, that's probably a blessing. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's, he's looking particularly... Deviant as part of deviant's probably the safest word to use as part of Movember. There we so, go. Um, there we go. All it's good, good to go. <laughs> right. Here we are. Hello, gentlemen. Good evening. Evening. How are you yeah. both feeling? Excited. Um, Toby, you look you look so up for this. I'm nervous. <laughs> <and so. laughs> <Big time. sighs> it's fun. Just you know. Yeah. Don't upstage us too much. Don't look too polished. James is already looking dapper, you know, looking, looking, uh, looking slid. So that's a worry. We're sitting in our t-shirts, but yeah, thanks for agreeing to this. Cause obviously when we, we, we offered this to you a couple of weeks ago, I, I, I'll be honest. I wasn't sure if you were going to say yes. Um, so I'm really delighted. I'm really delighted you both did. And, uh, yeah. It's going to be fun, right? The most important thing is we're going to have fun. So, yeah, the idea is we're going to bring on some guests, maybe one at a time, maybe a couple at a time, depending on, on you know, who's in the green room. Craig's going to basically just just throw us some curveballs and surprise us. We're going to see who joins us, and then and then we'll just have some fun. Yeah. Craig, whenever you're ready. Well, I, I actually thought we might start with Chris Bishop because I, I think this all started in when when I called into your house for dinner, and we this did is our first one. And then yep. came back to Australia and we did another one. And then someone asked us a question that you and I didn't know the answer to. So we did, asked um, Chris to come on. <laughs> that happens, next that week. happens a lot for me. So, so Chris was our, our first guest. So I think we he was. Bring Chris on there. Here he is. Hey, Hello. Hey, Bish. Hey, you're, you're, in are we? you're in New Zealand at the moment. <laughs> I am in New Zealand at the moment. Yeah. How are you, mate? I'm very good, mate. How's life with you? It's really good. We got to say thank you to you because now when we ask guests to come on, they know they can Google what this is all about. They know what they're letting themselves in for. They can decide whether it's for them or not. And when we asked you, you just went in blind and just said yes anyway. So we, we first couple of episodes we were calling in favors from mates. So you know, without you, this probably doesn't exist. 
Geez, I hope it's got better since that first uh, first episode. <laughs> I, uh, I think, no, not really. I, not really. I, I think I did it on uh, about one hour sleep after uh, the birth of my uh, second child. So uh, I was, I was in true. good form. This is very true. And they must have just turned one. Uh, she's one on Tuesday, yeah. So Yeah, yeah, perfect. 12-month anniversary. Um, awesome, awesome. Without further ado, we're going to pass you on to our, our... Well, I don't know which one of you two chaps has got something to ask Bish, but please do fire away. Um, and that's, that'll be me to start kick things off. Um, Chris, I, I was lucky enough to, to listen to you on that episode, and you talked all about making your own 3D gate lab pretty much mm -hmm. in your garage with a couple of video cameras and a couple of lights. Yep. Um, do you think that there is a place for 3D gate analysis for everyone, for all research, or would you think it has a place in your day-to-day -day, uh, setting? Uh, look, I think it's got a, got a place. I think the benefit about 3D gate analysis is the um, ability to combine the kinetics and the kinematics, and that's the big thing. So there is quite a few systems that are kinematics only. And um, I think as much as that can provide some really good information, it's probably got less of an application in a commercializability point of view. Um, I think there's a lot of, um, a lot of benefit in video gate analysis still. Um, and obviously there's a cost effectiveness for, for it. But I do believe a full bone clinical gate analysis combined with kinematics and kinetics is useful clinically as well but i will say even though i've got it probably only five to ten percent of my patients actually benefit or are prescribed it or referred for it so i think it's important that despite you having the technology it's not for everyone and you've got to have a clear purpose or question um for justifying the, the cost and the expense um of the process so you so you clearly wouldn't use it for everyone no, I don't use it. Like, I've got the system there. I could if I want. But the only time I use it, if all of a sudden I, I just can't answer it based on standard techniques or analytical processes. And then we go, right, this is a little bit more complicated and we need to delve in a little bit more detailed. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. So actually, while on this topic, um, Chris, have you, have you met Izzy, Izzy Moore? I'll just bring Izzy on. I'm assuming you're familiar with her work. Oh, I've read one or two of the papers. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Izzy. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. So, Izzy, you did your episode was episode sixteen back on the fifteenth yeah. of fifteenth of March, um, and your episode was mostly around running economy, uh, as I recall, um, and it was it was a pretty popular one, wasn't it, Craig? Uh, yeah. And rightly so. Um, did you want Bish and Izzy to talk about anything, Craig, or should we well, ask one I, of the chaps? I was going to, well, I had that question for Izzy, I, I, and, and Chris may want to chip in as well, but it was on that, that paper that was published recently on um, running economy, and that sort of showed that if you, the, if you thought about what you're doing with your running technique, you were less economic. Um, yeah. yeah, I wasn't saying that you shouldn't do gate retraining, but I just thought it was interesting that, that concentrating on different aspects of your running technique actually leads to, well, allegedly leads to a less running economy. So I just wonder if you wanted to comment on that. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, uh, Linda's done quite a few papers like that. Uh, this is kind of her latest one where she actually measures some movement parameters, which is, yeah. which is good to see. Um, but uh, I think what's most interesting is she never has a control condition. So you don't actually know if focusing on your movement was worse for you or actually it was just worse to focusing on, I think they watched the video of the environment, um, but it intuitively does make sense because you are now making your very uh, kind of automated movement fairly conscious in your mind. Um, and even though I'm a biomechanist, uh, there, is a, there is a brain attached to the human body um, and so any kind of <laughs> any kind of interruption um, is likely to increase your oxygen consumption uh, mm -hmm. and it's kind of a given and most of our studies where we manipulate gait in any way oxygen consumption RPE they increase um, because people are doing things they're not familiar with and they now have to think about sure. um, yeah uh, Chris you don't have a uh, question for Izzy or a comment on that paper <laughs> oh, look, I think Izzy has probably nailed it. I think the one big thing, I think there's a role for, for gait retraining, but for me, it's about just trying to sort of build capacity and 
I try to, you know, I, I probably spend a little bit more time in the gym with my patients, trying to build capacity and then allow them to run and give them probably less to think about when they actually run, knowing that they've done the hard work and, and develop the capacity in the, in the gym or in their, in their programs. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there for gait retraining, but, you know, the more you have to think about it, the, um, the, yeah, as Izzy said, the, the, the more oxygen you're going to have to con- consume. So you are going to probably have a, a negative effect, but it's important that those control groups are probably considered to understand whether it's actually worse for you. J- JW and Tobe, did one of you have a question for Izzy? Yeah, well, I, I, I'd written something down. I, I only ended up writing something about concussion and scrum caps from the uh, from the paper that came out today. So yeah. I thought, oh, there we go. But it's quite, it's quite, going back to the running retreat, I was quite interested. Uh, I had the pleasure to do Tom Goom's course a while ago. And I was quite surprised at how subtle the cues were to change what people are doing. So when they say, oh, gate retraining, you think, oh, I'm going to change everything about the way I run. And actually, the, the cues were so subtle but it, it was it, it's quite you can make a profound effect with a very subtle cue effectively it seems. yeah yeah definitely we we've kind of got a paper under review with with tom as well that he's he's contributed to which um it's great to have a kind of clinical insight to our, our biomechanical studies um and actually as well it's it's sort of the subtle cues but it's also it's that and it's hard for us to test in our lab, but they're quite individual as well. So what works for perhaps Toby might not work for James in that. Like it's how you interpret it. Because um, uh, sometimes <laughs> I work with some SNC coaches and they come up with some very weird and wonderful analogies and, and cues to try and get people to change what they're doing. And um, truth be told, sometimes the simplest type ones are, are the best that are fairly direct at the movement. But... Yeah, the easiest one is just to change stride width, stride frequency. It's a nice subtle one, but it has a whole host of mechanical changes associated with it. Um, it's kind of a bit of a go-to, I think, for, for most people changing gait. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Izzy. Look, well, Perfect. Thanks, Thank Izzy. you. I'll move you back yeah. to the green room, Izzy, and we've, we've, got, thanks, Izzy. we've got Ethel on now. I think it's midnight for you, Ethel. Hey, buddy. It, is just, it is just about, hey, guys. I was just right. sitting there thinking, Hoping that I didn't have to ask Izzy a question because I know nothing about running. <laughs> yeah. because, she's, because she's basically way too smart for all of us, and that's fine. exactly. Uh, I'm just trying to remind myself where the date of yours. Your we did the podiatry and football. It was World Cup. It was June 28, episode 31, and you wowed you us all with your. You wowed us all with your sort of stud surface interaction stuff. Um, and continue yeah, to wow me on a daily got, basis. I thought you've got no band tonight. No band, and the, <laughs> light, did, the lights are staying the bar, off for the moment. I was wondering yeah. how long it would take. No mood lighting or anything. <laughs> that was commitment. That was like that was like four a.m. And you know, it was uh, the cleaners were around, had the music cranked up, and uh, yeah, that was interesting. Time. You were mate. You were a total pro as always. Um, Thanks a lot, JW. Is your question or is it one for Toad? Yeah, yeah. Um, Athol, you, you've been doing your research. Um, has it finished or are you in the end stages of it now? <laughs> like, uh, did you invite my wife on here? No, it hasn't <laughs> finished. <laughs> it's still going. It's very close. Um, thanks, James, for bringing that up. I've been doing it part time. I'm still working in the clinic um, as well at Aspatar. So it's been part time. It's been going on from about the start of 2014 and I'm on the fifth um, study now and all the data's in. So uh, last paper's in and just to write it up and uh, sort of top and tail it, as it were, put it in the university format. It's, uh, it's through a UK university, actually. My wife's from Northern Ireland, so it's the University of Ulster in Northern Ireland. So hopefully we'll defend that. Great place. Um, yes, thank you. Hopefully I'll defend that in the early new year. Cool, because that, that was the other question was to do with your love of football pitches and what is the best grass to run on? I know you used to have a picture of you and uh, a pitch with a with a lighting rig across it. That yeah, moved really. At, at a I've, certain I've really, speed. I've really gotten into grass. Grass is amazing. It doesn't talk back <laughs> to you or, or demand anything. You can just go out and and test on it and do all sorts of things. And there's, uh, I wouldn't. There's no I wouldn't way. snip those little bits out about you liking grass. <laughs> though. Um, Clever editing so needed. It, com- com- of course, uh, depends on where you are in the world. Um, the groundsmen really just aim to have 100% uh, 
grass coverage and, and a surface that's wonderful to play on and, and if that can also minimize injury risk then, then that's a, a bonus. Um, so I, I love a grass species called Paspellum grass which is uh, an American I can't believe grass. you're doing this, you're going to do well, it. I genuinely say it's just a, lo <laughs> it's a lovely blue-green blue colour but um, <laughs> <laughs> it depends where you live. Yeah. Actually, really? while, while, while on the topic of football, I've just brought Lindsay on. So if you want to... Hey, Lindsay. Hi. 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 How are you? Are you okay? I'm okay, thanks. It was funny you talking about grass because I was at a conference last week, at um, medical conference at Manchester United. And uh, when we did the, we did a bit of a mini tour of the stadium beforehand and it was all about the lights that they had on the grass to try and imitate the sunshine that we don't have in Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was quite interesting and it was like do not walk on the pitch <laughs> yeah Brilliant. so it's a it's a big thing here with the the new stadium designs that are coming in for the world cup in 2022 and and lots of them obviously uh quite come over the top of the yeah. pitch so there's not a lot of sun so grow lights are becoming super important and, and Tottenham, actually, yep. their new stadium has something. Uh, I just, I'm glad you're going to bring that up because that's going to be one of the best stadiums in the, on the planet. It really will be. Yes. Um, it keep, really keep will dreaming, be. Keep dreaming. Keep <laughs> dreaming. Right. It's 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 looking special. When it opens in 2030, you'll all be sorry. It's just it looks no. like a toilet. <laughs> it looks amazing. It's going to be awesome. And when Atta, when you're in London, we're going to go there. And we're going to check out the pitch. We're going to check out the grass for you. Okay. I can't wait, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> JW, Tobe, did anyone have a question for Lindsay? A football related yeah, question. A, I got a, yeah, I got a quick one with Lindsay. The, I just popped onto your video today briefly and you talk about football boots, how they're not designed at all for the female foot and you were getting a lot of like first MTPJ problems and stuff. Yeah. Is there, is there any much headway coming sort of towards a you know, especially with increased participation in female sports. So yeah, that... I'm not really sure. The design of football boots hasn't really changed that much. Um, and I remember that um, No Miss were the one that was trying to sort of go more down the sort of medical football boot. And then obviously they've disbanded and no longer manufacturing the, the boots anymore. So um, I don't know whether we're any further on really with, with those kind of issues. And, and it's whether the girls will wear them as well, you know, it, it, the, the design features, it's whether the girls want to wear them, the, you know, they, they, they want a certain boot and a certain look, and so it's whether they'll actually take your advice anyway. They have the same problem that kids do, that they want to wear Cristiano's boot. Yeah, that's it, and it's not always the ones that are good for the feet that they want to wear, and so there's that whole education um, side to it as well. Great. Footballers never do what they're told, right? Who have we got here? No. Oh, here we go. Here yeah. We go. Okay, well, look, th thanks, guys, for the soccer. I just thought I'd bring Debbie and Jill on together um, to talk about the... Uh, hang on, just, let me just... Can you hear us there, Debbie? I can't unmute you. Okay, we'll just... Yeah. While you're doing that, Lindsay, this is still about boot. Oh, oh no, Lindsay's oh, gone. Sorry, no. I just, I was just. Well, I can't. Well, you've got to be quicker than that, sir. You've got to be quicker. Than <laughs> I know. <laughs> clearly, I need to learn fast. It was more okay, about boot design, but I will. That can yeah. wait. Okay, I've got Debbie <laughs> and Jill now. Can you guys hear us? All right. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Hi, guys. Um, Hi. So let me just quickly remind everyone which episodes these were. Jill's was episode 23 back on the 3rd of May. Osteoarthritis. And it was a wildly, wildly popular one. And yeah. uh, Debbie's was only a few weeks ago. It was... Uh, when was Debbie's? Rheumatology. Episode 48, November 1st. So, um, yeah. Thank you both for coming back on. Two, two episodes that were hugely popular and quite clearly because um, they're things that people see every day and things that, you know, the feedback that we get after these episodes and the emails and the private messages that we get and after we delete the abusive ones and we just look at the nice ones. The nice ones um, uh, about your episodes were all related around someone saying something along the lines of, I, I, I took something out of that that I applied literally the next day. And I think that's, kind of the, the cool thing about this that's what we wanted to achieve um 
JW and Tobe, you know, over to you. Mm-hmm. Well, I think these are the two episodes I actually haven't seen. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, how dare you? How dare you? Sorry, I'm so sorry. Jill, off, the, off the back of Jill, off the back of Griff's question just then. Yeah. Um, and you posted something uh, earlier on this week. Have you changed your assessment or treatment practice over the last ten years? And the same thing could be applied to Deb. What have I changed? Because that was the question you posed after yeah, Kylie yeah, had posted Kylie. something. Yeah, totally nicked that from Kylie. Mm. Yeah, and it was a really good... I just think sometimes as a profession we need to just reflect on not only where we're going personally, but where the evidence is going as well and what we can change out of that. And I think the big thing for me is that, particularly with osteoarthritis, because that was my area, is exercise and potentially load through running has been found to not be you know detrimental to knee osteoarthritis from that we can maybe extrapolate it doesn't um is as detrimental to foot so you know staying active staying in staying participated in physical activity or exercise or hobbies is really really important and having osteoarthritis at any age whether it's young or old shouldn't um restrict your mindset from being able to participate because we actually know that if you want to live a long healthy life it's actually being part of a community and being part of friends lives and doing things and actually it's just a very clear message that everyone can take home that if you want to try something new if you want to do a new hobby like your osteoarthritis shouldn't really prevent that and that you know pain does improve management does improve and sometimes about knowing that you're not going to damage yourself more um if i just bring debbie in because i know she'll appreciate this we personally both know a really famous professor called professor phil helliwell who's advocate foot um, um foot research and foot rheumatology and you know he always says he runs on knees that have absolutely no cartilage on and you know Debbie will agree with me to say that you know he runs miles and you know he's a strong early advocate he does a lot of fell running and people like that know a little bit more have a bit more confidence but it's actually saying to the rest of the population just because you've got osteoarthritis don't let it limit you and you know taking that message forward and that's something I'm a lot more like if you want to do it just load gradually manage your pain you know like we would with any tendon disease actually we should think about the same way Okay, so, and the same, same thing to Debbie. <clears throat> I think in terms of my practice, there's probably two key things. Um, being able to incorporate ultrasound imaging has been a real game changer for me. Um, and it certainly has influenced point of care and the decisions that I would make around treatments. Um, I think more recently, um, we've started to do some more qualitative research um, and um, listening to some interviews um, that my PhD student Kit Carter has been doing with patients with PSA. Um, I've always been very much a quantitative research girl, um, but I'm very much seeing the value of um, qualitative and um, I've learned an awful lot um, it, just by listening and seeing the themes that have come up and it's certainly influenced the way in which I would um, tackle the whole patient assessment and decisions around treatment. Okay. I think that feeds back into the whole, uh, you know, kind of motivational interviewing, basically getting much more immersed in the patient's story, because that's very much a theme around, isn't it, at the moment that we, yeah. we, 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 we rather mean quite directive, that we, we take that whole kind of personalised medicine approach. Yeah, absolutely. A prime example is a really strong theme that's come up with Kate's work, has been that if a patient with psoriatic arthritis has a close family member, um, that they actually feel that their disease is much better understood. We've seen that they have much better coping strategies. Um, you know, and that's something that, you know, that is now part of the, the question that I would have, because if not, those would be the patients that I would be directing towards self-care groups or, you know, peer support. So that's just a kind of a prime example of how that, that kind of interaction can influence the kind of decisions that you'd make in practice. Yeah, and I think just reflecting on that, like you say, people haven't got um, family support, that whole you know, online um, social support, for people who maybe don't have the family member. And that I think I do, there's been a nice paper that came out about osteoarthritis and um, I think one of the trusts had a Facebook group for them and that people's well-being improved and it's that whole interconnectivity network and people feeling like, I know where they're coming from. So I know uh, Debbie knows uh, we, we, we've worked with, together with something called Dr. Eileen Tan, who's um, pioneered this whole people running with arthritis in park run. 
and it's that whole thing again come back to the idea of being part of a community you know being able to go on a facebook group and say oh my arthritis is bad yeah mine's bad but i'm going to try this oh i might try that so it's going to using that community isn't it to give you a little bit of sense of someone understands me which i think is great sure. right so thank, thanks guys answered your question yeah, thanks i'll move you guys back to the green room and then we'll bring on our next couple of guests there, guys see you thanks you thanks debbie yeah, so ian and ted we're just about to bring you on i'm just has someone told Ted he's only got two, two and a half minutes? <laughs> hey, and he's sideways. Awesome. Turn your camera around, Ted. <laughs> oh, okay. Let us I like know. you like that. I like you like that. <laughs> well, come on. It's, um, look, being uh, down under, this has uh, surely got to be a, uh, a consequence of what happens. Does that work, or she? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Has he got a holding? Has Ted got a holding page? <laughs> Has his computer got off and he's got a holding page of his own face? Yeah. Hello, no. Mr. Lane. How are you, sir? I'm I'm good, young man. I kind of want to come back to something that Jill said earlier on. Uh, I've got the classic um, podiatry thumb where you've got OA at the base of it all, and was described wonderfully to me by actually as bone on bone. And just coming back to Jill's comment about the exercise, the one thing I've done with it. Or well, two things I've done with that. One is based on something from Kate Patterson over in Australia using some moves, the OA, but particularly working with the exercise and strengthening of the thumb muscle. And it's mental big reduction in pain in, in, in the base of my thumb, so I can carry on working with that quite nicely. So just kind of reinforcing what Jill said there, really. Yeah, I'm delighted to hear your thumbs are okay. Yeah, Kid, can you can you hear us and see us? We can't see your video. Okay, I can yeah. hear you, and okay, uh, well, I we'll, we'll, see you. Move, you'll move on with, with the segment, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, think, um, video how are you, Ted? How are you, sir? Oh, you okay? wonderful. Thank you, Griff. Uh, thank, and congratulations. Um, Merry happiness on your uh, milestone. That's, I think, a tremendous <laughs> achievement. And uh, I, I like your ideas of planning of uh, what's happening next year with uh, giving yourselves a little more leeway. So, well done. A great, great. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I know. We, uh, we, we, <clears throat> We just get just being lazy, really. Just once a week, just isn't wasn't sustainable. <laughs> I mean, it was for Craig. If, if we're being completely honest, uh, Craig is totally up for it. And you know, Craig's and anyone who doesn't know Craig, well, everyone knows who Craig is a machine. This guy is <laughs> is like nothing. I I am not a machine, and I've I've hit breaking points. So we compromised. I was ready to throw the whole thing in, if I'm honest. But Craig convinced me <laughs> once a month was a goer. So um, right. Tobe, JW, what have you got for our, no, well, let me, let me first remind ourselves when this episode was, because it was the first one that got a really, uh, a really quite a big audience, I think. Oh, no, no, actually, it was the second one that got the big audience. Uh, Belinda's Dermatology what? one was the first one, but it was episode 10 back on, all the way back on the 1st of February that you gentlemen joined us. So thanks for joining us again. And Toby, JW, what have you got for our, our mobilization men Silence. Toby's. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, James sent me a list of highlighted people he was desperate to speak to, and I can't remember if these two were on his bit or mine. He, Ian's on oh. your list, Ted's on mine. Oh, was he? Oh, yeah. so you, go, you go Ted then, James. Ted? You've got to wing it like we do every week. Yeah. <laughs> Ted, <laughs> Ted clear, clearly you're an advocate of your mobilisation. What made you say that? <laughs> <laughs> just, just an assumption that was all um, between the lines i clearly i clearly for you it works but for how long uh probably now i'd say 23 years i apologize being a bit uh, facetious there um it, it not at all what your uh, clinical objectives are and your outcomes. And uh, the body is a dynamic uh, structure that's constantly exposed to different forces. It, it's not a, a silver bullet, quick fix it, um, one stop shop treatment, or one, whatever ever other analogy uh, or phrase that we can come up with. Um, it, it's, I mean, look at the professions like physiotherapy, chiropractic. Uh, these are all manual therapy professions that uh, deal with the dynamic body. Um, there's no question it works, and there's no question it doesn't work for everyone and everything. Uh, I think the biggest... Uh, of course, thing that, that, would, that would be crazy to suggest that it worked for everyone and everything. Why? 
Would, no, the, it That's would be crazy right. to suggest that it would work for everyone and everything. No, no modality, no intervention does. No. Um, and I guess the thing from my experience, the biggest uh, thing that I've learnt or uh, concentrated on is the assessment process to work out who is it going to work for. Uh, because there are plenty of people who have uh, sought uh, our professional services and it's just not appropriate, then we've really got to refer them on. Uh, and that's because our clinic was set up as this is what we specialised in. So if you didn't meet the criteria of uh, being uh, able to benefit from our services, then you've got to see someone else. And uh, that's yeah, very straightforward uh, process. But um, it, it's a field that yeah, I love to uh, see some great advantages, and particularly for the podiatry profession, where we very few practitioners uh, get taught or undertake training with this. Uh, I think it's, um, yeah, it would be great for more podiatrists to be exposed <coughs> and to have these skills. Super, and, and the same to Ian. The same what? Same question, how long does it last, in, et cetera, et cetera. You, with your with your vast experience within this, I know we've chatted about this before. The, the, clearly, it works because you see the results, but it's the the long term application. Okay, so I, I don't separate any manual intervention from rehab exercise or from changing people's thinking processes. It's all has to be tied into. That's always been the case throughout. I do get chance to follow patients up and. Obviously, there's a limit to how many people you can follow up, but I have patients I'm following up for one, two, and three years, and the benefits that are being gained from treatment sessions, maybe one, two, or even three treatment sessions at the most, those people have continued to have that benefit for two and three years. Um, some people I've been treating with the fascia stuff I've become involved with recently, I've followed them up for 18 months, and they're still benefiting from those treatment sessions after 18 months. It goes back to the fact that I provided one thing into that mix, um, the other things are just as important. Um, so I've always felt <clears throat> the, the concept from older research where you were looking at a modality, measure how long the outcome lasts, doesn't last very long, therefore it may not work or it may not be effective, is actually been a, a misunderstanding of the humanness about us all. And I think I was very interested in hearing Jill and others coming back to the idea of the fact that we are human, we have a brain on the body, we need to work with all of that as part of our rehab. So mobilization, manipulation, there are some very good papers coming out on the neurophysiological component of that, the changes that are going on in that, and, and quite robust. Papers. Um, but for me, yes, I, I, I'm comfortable with seeing the benefits for, for, for patients. Uh, no miracles, I'm afraid. Do you think the pressure comes on with that, though, Ian, because it's an intervention that might be need to do it quite regularly that from a maybe an nhs standpoint cash of seeing patients constantly or a private the same that it's maybe that's why it's drifted out of fashion more because people just don't want to chuck money at a treatment package that's going to go on for you know the next 10 weeks if, if needs be obviously um i don't think we've been asking necessarily the right research questions uh, i'm not a research person I'm just a straightforward bsc guy so you i'm somewhat in awe of everybody who's on here talking about their papers but i think for a long time we've not been asking the right questions or looking necessarily at all the information that's come out and understood and interpreted properly um uh, any manual therapy approach of mine might be one session maybe two max the rest will be generally rehab work um so from the point of view of the benefit uh, of using it, it's, it's, it's economical as far as I'm concerned in that maybe one or two sessions are enough to get somebody kind of started and motivated and moving along. If I'm using more than two sessions of manual therapy with somebody, I think I'm actually missing something. Um, I would also say for me as well, the, the push is, I, I'm not sure I actually mobilize joints. I think I actually mobilize skin. I think I actually mobilize Rufini corpuscles through the skin and various other things that possibly brings the greater benefit and the greater changes. So a joint mode for B is something I might focus on as a joint at some point, predominantly is trying to reduce what I've called inappropriate stiffness in, in tissues like muscles. Once I can get that changed, I'm able to kind of find patients moving on a lot quicker. I'm not saying that's the answer, but that's where I'm, that's where I'm up with it, really. Okay, look, thanks, guys. I, we we're conscious of the time, so I'll move you two back to the um, 
green room and we'll bring on our next guest. Thanks, um, guys. Thanks. I'm just, I might bring on Peter to talk about vascular issues. Perfect. Change the topic somewhat. Here she is. Hello. Hey, Peter. Hello. I may or may Hi. not have just rolled out of bed. <laughs> no, it's, not, it's not that early. <laughs> I know. It's really how was, how, so, was your, how was your US trip? Oh, it was really good, thank you. We actually met with um, Professor Joe Mills. So oh, he's the uh, flow of yeah. the toe and flow with David Armstrong. So it was really great. We spent some time in the hospital and, yeah, yeah. it was really good. How, how was the conference? DEF CON was really cool, yeah. Um, it was um, very much vascular um, and surgical, but um, still learnt a whole heap. There was a lot of focus on um, different models of care that people are trying out there, but it's all about basically podiatry working alongside vascular as a team, so that toe flow model, and they're getting great outcomes, which is really great. So yeah. hoping to bring that back and try and develop some local um, solutions. Yeah. So that was my question. What was, what was the one big take home from that conference for you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that was it. Like, and I think um, everyone needs to sort of just develop local, local solutions because these problems, even though they're global kind of issues, they are in essence about local service delivery. So mm -hmm. If we can try and work that out on a local level, I think we can definitely change outcomes. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Peter, your your vascular episode back on episode fourteen back on yeah. the first of March. Um, we knew it was popular, which you did with Martin Fox. Obviously, we knew it was popular. It's um, just looking at the stats here of all fifty episodes or forty nine, and then this one. Um, it's it's the most viewed, but of all fifty. Yeah, is right. our to date most popular uh, <laughs> over four over four and a half thousand views. Yeah, um, wow. yeah. So actually, I get that, people. That yeah. is sexy, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I get emails like every now and again out of the blue. Um, just clinicians contacting me, which is I love. So please, if anyone's you know, feel free to contact me about all sorts of things, like you know, what equipment should I get or. Yeah, so off the, off the back of that episode. Yeah, they say know. I saw your episode on Podchat Life. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, well, you're getting more messages about yeah. it than we are. Is what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Toby's, Toby's getting sent. Toby's in. Toby's first ever episode. He's getting sent a mug. Fifty episodes. No one sent me a mug. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. Go on, Craig. Well, I was going to say, go. have you noticed that the the most popular episodes are the ones that we're not interested in? <laughs> Yeah, I have. I have. <laughs> there's, a, there's a common theme running through this, chat. <laughs> well, no, no, no. In all, in all honesty, I think it's the topics that, you know, who thought dermatology would do as well as what it did? Who thought vascular, you know, like this, no one. The topics that we didn't necessarily expect to do well are actually the ones that seem to do very well, which, we, you know, which is, which is good, you know. The topics we didn't even intend to do when we first started off. Um, yeah, Tobe, Tobe, firstly, there's a lot of comments on the Facebook uh, thread about how much you're touching your moustache. It's making a lot of people uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, myself included. Myself included. Um, they, who, who had a question for Peter? Who's, who had Peter on their list? Uh, that's probably, I think that's me. But maybe you look like you want to have a question. Yeah, I did. I just want to say, when you said people are contacting you about what, kit to have what do you what do you recommend what what should people have that's in the drawer next to them to yeah yeah that's a really good question and i first i have to reply and just ask them how they intend on using it and what kind of patients they regularly see oh my god you're drinking a beer <laughs> um, and <laughs> Um, That's not tea. I've had my coffee, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good early for beer over here. It's not first thing um, in the morning. Yeah, that's that. Um, so, um, and how confident they are in using the equipment. So if they don't feel confident taking a toe pressure, then I suggest an automated version. So um, there's lots of automated equipment out of there, <coughs> available out there, but some is good and some is not as good. Um, but keep it simple, a Doppler definitely, um, a PPG probe and a cuff so you can take toe pressures. Um, and then I would suggest an automated brachial cuff um, that's been validated so you can speed, speed things up a little bit. Mm. 
Great. Thank, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Peter. Again, conscious of the time, and, and we'll just move you back to the green. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome. And hope you enjoy the rest of what we're going to talk about, and we'll... Will do. <laughs> Thank you. We're just going to bring on... Whoops, sorry. I made a boo-boo. I just <laughs> boo-boo. <laughs> You're the Toby. Hi, Toby. Hi, Toby. <laughs> hey, oh, do you want to take over, Peter? <laughs> <laughs> far, far better looking co-host. Hang on. Sorry, Toby. I'll just find you and bring you back. Okay. So, look, I'll just bring on Seth. We'll talk about tendons. Beautiful. Oops, I've just brought on Simon. By me. Oh, look, I've, I've just... Yeah, hey, Simon. Look, oh, we'll, here we go. We'll, here we'll we go. I, I, <laughs> thanks, thanks for getting dressed up, big dog. Sorry, I, I've, I clicked on you by mistake, Simon, instead of Toby, but oh, okay. we've got you there now, Simon, so let's... We'll, we'll, uh, okay, hey, Simon. Hi, how, are you? how are you, mate? You all right? I'll tell you what, Toby's moustache, wow. <laughs> I know, I know. Chin, chin. Where is he? Where is he? He's, hopefully he's off shaving it. Or, yeah, no, 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 got, no, got him no. back now. <laughs> It's November, isn't it? It is, it is. Well, she had a lovely curry tonight, mate. What did you have? I had a lamb, Harry Murchibuna. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. How was Ireland? Uh, casual. <laughs> <laughs> How's Pink Adam? So... <laughs> For people who don't know what you're going on about, you have been on some kind of uh, seven tour trip of following a band that I've never heard of before I've met you. What are they called? Combo. Yeah, yeah. You've been following you two around Europe like a schoolboy, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and does your daughter feel me. embarrassed? No. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter loves them. My, my, my daughter actually has taste in music. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, who's got a question for the big dog? I think that's me. That, I was, I, it was a debate whether it was going to be serious or not. So, I, I thought I'd go semi-serious. The, you spoke Simon with likes to send me. Craig, you, went with, you spoke with Griff and Craig in your episode about subject specific data and about one of Ben O'Nig's paper, would you stick it all out there? What? <laughs> is there a question in there? <laughs> I don't <laughs> what? What? what was that? In my, in my head there was a question. It clearly I hasn't come out as a question. <laughs> what? <laughs> you just I, I might go with the alternative question. Let's which try was, that again. When you chatted with Craig and Griff in your episode yeah. and you were quoting yeah. uh, Ben O'Nig's paper and about Which his one? subjects, uh, one of his papers where he gave you all of the subject specific data and you yes. were deciding whether or not you would do, you would do that yourself. I, I, Griffiths, answer this question for the man. What do <laughs> I think about? All, all foot orthotic research should report subject specific data. End of story. Fine, that <laughs> answer my question then. There's the mic drop. Yeah, that is a big. Yeah. Griff. So yeah, I... <laughs> hey, I'm glad that went terribly badly. It makes me look like a half decent host. I'll tell you what, Welshie, <laughs> Welshie, have you been in court today? Because you're yeah. the only one. <laughs> Right? Yeah. I have. Is this, is this tweed? Triple. Well, no, actually, double. <laughs> double double tweed. tweed. Double tweed. Toby, I've never met you, but I love the moustache. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it's really? been very serious. Okay. <laughs> Craig, thank you very much. This has been great. Can I go now? Yes. Uh, yeah. Right. Thank, thanks, thanks Solomon. I'll put you back to the green room and we'll. Good, I'll, Curry. And I'll bring on I'll bring on, <laughs> I'll bring on Seth this time. As I meant, clicked on the. So Simon's episode was foot orthosis dosing back on thirty first of May, episode twenty seven. And Seth is coming on. He was a few weeks later. He was episode 30, 21st of June, and his episode was on Achilles tendonopathy. Yeah, 
Yeah. Hey, Seth. Hi, hey, buddy. Right. You out his How are you? I feel I'm not looking gangster enough after uh, that uh, view of Simon. <laughs> no one's gang. No one's gangster compared to him. How are you, mate? You well? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're good. Thanks, mate. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Just been long, long keep day in busy. Uh, keep busy. Yeah. yeah, yeah good. <laughs> Everyone's looking um, very dapper. I feel in the dress with James there. So yeah. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Ian and I got the uniforms, the T-shirts. Can you see? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mine's a bit different. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Very cool. Like um, <laughs> so, who wants to talk tendons with Dr. Soleus himself? Well, after my car crash there, Toby's got this one. I needed to flag up that question that you use at the conference. Um, where it's just got the flow diagram of uh, is it a question and eventually you get to the no. <laughs> <laughs> very, good, very good yeah. diagram there. Yeah. You, Seth was highlighted on your list, James, that you got very excited about Send Me. So. <laughs> oh dear. You got really James, can't go as bad as that last one did. Mm -hmm. I was just going to rock up and wing it, and I, I got Monday. I got a big long list from James saying I want to talk to X, Y, and Z, and I got questions. And I'm like, go for it. <laughs> but he's, he's gone something now. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's huge suggestions and, and uh, accusations on the comments here that we're, we've all been on the piss because this is starting to fall <laughs> apart. So someone, <laughs> JW, Tobe, someone save this, bring it back, bring it back. Okay. Kind of uh, Castlemaine four X in your drawer. <laughs> uh, I've got a beer. <clears throat> so, 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 with your treatment and your pre the start again. <laughs> <laughs> That's with your current work, and this was based on a question which we asked Jill earlier. Over the last ten years, have you changed your treatment programs? based on the research yeah. you've, you've done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 10 years ago, I've um, been using predominantly probably more eccentric loading. Um, now I'd always use isotonic, so um, concentric and eccentric. And um, yeah, we do a coordinatory thing now. So instead of just a straight up heel raise uh, work, we tend to try and get people to um, slow down this sort of tremor that we've observed in their sort of muscle as they do the eccentric component. Um, so that's one of the biggest changes I've had. Um, and just much happier with loading people much, much heavier. Um, that's really probably the biggest thing to come out of our research is um, we, we are pretty strong and we should uh, load up the calf to tolerate the normal loads it's got to withstand. So, yeah. So would, you say <laughs> there's, would you say there's still a place for things like Alfredson's technique? Yeah, yeah. I have no problem with using eccentrics. Um, I think it's critical long term and our clinical research on it. Um, it, with a case series, which we've hopefully got sort of getting published soon, it's got really good clinical outcomes using eccentrics. So despite what people tell us that it's crap, it, it's not, it's good. It's probably just needs to be badged appropriately and individualized. So by, by that, I mean just targeting the person and looking at all the other factors that go with them. And if you do it within an eclectic thing, I don't think it matters that much what loading program you use. Um, and I think most studies suggest that anything goes, get them strong, get them uh, resistant, uh, big heavy weights and um, resilient enough to cope with normal stuff and uh, get them to chill out about what's going on. So they're not worried. Yeah, straightforward. <laughs> Fair enough. Perfect. Okay, yeah, great. Thanks, Thanks Seth. Well, thanks, 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 mate. Thanks, mate. Catch up. Catch we'll, up soon, mate. We'll just spring on. Um, let's bring on Emma next. So Emma's episode was yes, one of our Emma. early ones. Oops. Can you hear us there, Emma? I can hear you. Can you hear oh, yeah. We can hear you. Good. You're a bit quiet. Hi, Emma. <laughs> so Emma's episode was one of the ones that isn't on our Facebook page because was it episode four or five you did for us, Emma? I Remind was me. Early on. Yeah. We did it before. I think we did it before Christmas. It was um, before we kind yeah, of decided to br brand this stuff. I think we. I think we had Christmas jumpers on, didn't we? So um, <laughs> again, another person a bit like Bish who. We called in favours from five. people. We, we oh, oh it was episode five. You know, we were still yeah. calling in favours from people we really respected, but also we knew well enough that we thought might say yes. So again, another person who we need to thank because 
without that momentum of those first four or five episodes, this, this thing doesn't become what it is now. So thank you so much. And thanks for coming and joining us again. Um, it's always lovely to catch up. Um, who has got a question for Emma? I'm got, praying it, it's Toby. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have, because the episode Emma did was academia. I thought I'd just ask a, a quick question about, obviously, the, the way podiatry will be studied in the in the future is particularly um, pathways into studying it seem to be um, potentially changing or opening to a wider scope at the moment. So, um, yeah, sort of where are we going with that sort of maybe more sort of... Want a, a, a blue sky really. answer or a pragmatic answer? Can I have both, please? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, I don't have my crystal ball on me, so uh, oh. I don't honestly know where they cross over. Um, yeah. You know, in an ideal world, wouldn't it be nice if we could just have, um, like we're doing with this, you just the bits you want, basically, so you could just access the speaker that you want. I recently posted something on the student um, Facebook group. Um, it was, I think it was Imperial or um, LSE or some, some Russell group was um, using holograms um, and like basically porting in speakers without actually having them there um, with the view to obviously being able to be, you know, just to showcase the best of the best. Um, and, you know, part of me was really blown away and impressed and thought, yeah, that sounds really awesome. But then part of me just then went, hang on a minute. No, the learning still happens one to one. So, you know, that peer to peer learning, the discussion, the deep learning, all of that stuff that we still do when we're together. It's why we still go to conferences, isn't it? It's the reason that we all want to hang out and we all want to get together. And let's face it, the real chats happen over the beers later on, don't they? So. Um, I, I would say that in terms of where we're going, I think the technology will take us in one direction. And I wonder if there will be a bit of kickback um, to keep humans being human. Um, the LinkedIn local thing, for example, has recently risen up, hasn't it? Because people have realised they need people, not robots, not screens quite so much. So, yeah, I think um, that's one way of looking at it. I think another way is um, in what we teach as well. So in, in my field, in musculoskeletal podiatry, um, I'm quite sure my contemporaries around the world are having the same headache as me, that it's moving so fast. There's this lag effect, as always, between what's happening out in practice and what's happening in the labs. And, um, you know, somewhere in the middle there is a sweet spot where human beings get involved and uh, you realise that not every treatment is going to work on everybody anyway. So how on earth do we get that through to our hungry students um, who just want to learn and just want to get on with the job without blowing their minds too soon. So yeah, that's sort of my first answer to you, Toby, if that if that's helped at all. Yeah, yeah. Excellent, thank you. Yeah. Great, Thank, thanks Emma. Look, we'll, we'll put you back into the green room. I know you've been waiting patiently <laughs> here and I'll just, I'll just- See bring you on, next week, Emma. I'll just bring Cheerio. on Kevin. Yeah. I'll next just week. bring on Kevin and then- <laughs> And hey, Kevin. Hello, sir. Hey. How are you? Oh, uh, about ready to start work, but I have a few minutes here to mm -hmm. talk with you guys if you're ready for me. You always. Thank you for joining us so much. I know, well, uh, Kevin, the, f the first thing I've got to ask you about how's the, the, your son getting on with after the fires? Mm -hmm. Uh, he's uh, yeah doing some long commutes. It's two hours from our house to his uh, job in Chico. Um, yeah, he's doing okay. He's a tough guy. So uh, he's uh, you know lost pretty much everything, but his uh, kid got away with two cars and his dog and uh, his work clothes and work boots. Uh, but you know, every, but we're luckily you know he has a place to stay now. So we're just um, good. We're trying to, you know, it's just a disaster up there. And this, is a, this paradise is a town that, you know, Pam and I have been going through for the last 35 years. It was, it's only an hour's drive from our property that we go to multiple times a year. So it's yeah, really yeah. A, quite, a, quite a disaster. Yeah, here's the photos you, paste, you posted. <laughs> yeah, so anyway. Really, so just I, I so glad wanna... so glad to hear everyone's safe though, Kevin. That's, you know, yeah, yeah, really... that's, yeah. Thanksgiving's, Thanksgiving's going to be very special this year, knowing that uh, he's safe, so. Yeah, but um, yeah. I appreciate you guys having me on, and uh, I'd rather not occupy well, with my, my little family things, but I do appreciate of course. 
your uh... you um you did episode six for us uh which is back on the 4th of january and um yeah again a bit like chris and a bit like emma uh, you know are, are definitely one of the reasons that this thing has become what it is so thank you so much and thanks for joining us again and who uh, out of jw and toby who's got a question for the boss james james <laughs> kevin i saw that volume five is being released very soon yeah we're um i've sent it off to the printer for the initial copies uh we'll actually get that back either by the end of this week or early next week and once i look it over then um i'll um we'll get it printed uh, we have a few advanced copies you know they can buy it at the precision educast website but it's you know again another five-year uh five-year collection of newsletters that I've written from, um, you know, this from when, uh, 2014 to 2018, five years total, 60 newsletters. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's good. It's, um, you know, the nice thing about the newsletters, I kind of explore any topic I want to. So it's, uh, some is theoretical, some is practical, some of it's just uh, me, um, doing some brainstorming on, um, you know, uh, we have an issue on maximal shoes and some issues on the foot strike and uh, in running, then go on to orthotic therapy and, uh, you know, some different clinical tests um, that I've been doing for years. And uh, just, you know, it's kind of nice because the precision intercast has always never really directed me. I just can kind of do what I want to on a monthly basis. And um, so I, you know, I know it's kind of a different, it's not a real textbook, but it is. Uh, there's something unique within the podiatry profession. So I've been doing it for, um, boy, since 1986. So uh, 30, 30 some years, I guess. So it's, uh, I'll keep going as long as I can. I, you know, it's, um, <laughs> it, it's sometimes hard, but I, I learned so much doing it that I, uh, I hope everyone else enjoys it. It's, it's, um, I'm going to send a, send a copy over to Ian for him to review. I've given him the task of, uh, of, uh, seeing what he thinks. So, uh, we'll see what say, happens. That's clearly on your Christmas list. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was. Well, and then Kevin, but, Kevin said to me, will, will you review it? And I said, what does that mean? And he said, well, I'll send you a free copy. I went, yep, I'll review it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, no, you know, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Really looking forward to seeing it. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, that's, um, I appreciate your thoughts on my son, Cameron, too. So, yeah, we're, uh, we're all happy. He's uh, unharmed. And, um, and I just had a, I've been doing, uh, doing a lot of, you know, about three international lectures a year, running the practice. I'm at practice right now, about ready to start seeing patients. And that's busy doing a lot of surgeries. Um, so, uh, you know, trying to stay at age six, almost 62, trying to stay on top of things. So uh, that's, it's uh, like um, Emma said. It's you know it's a fast moving. A lot of a lot of things are happening. So that's that's part of the issue is trying to stay up on things. But it's still still fun for me. And you know I just enjoy um, being at the office helping people. That's really what it's all about for me. I you know the it's nice teaching also, but um, being able to go ahead and you know help people uh, on a daily basis and having people driving from uh, around California to to ask my opinion on how I can help them is that's, you know, that's for me, that's what I got into podiatry for. So that's, that's what keeps me going. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks, thanks Kevin. Kevin. Pass our regards on to Cameron and hope everything comes right for him soon. So we'll put you. Okay. Well, thanks, in thanks for inviting me and good, good job, you guys. I appreciate uh, what you guys are doing for the international podiatry profession. Thank okay. you, sir. Hey, Robert. The Robert Hi. of Isaacs. Yeah, yeah, good to see everybody, and lovely to see you all, and lovely to see Toby's lip. <laughs> How the devil are you? I'm very well indeed, sir. I'm Your very well indeed. Your setting looks much nicer than ours. Uh, yeah, it, it, we, we're living the hotel life. This is um, in Dublin, doing a, a study day tomorrow with uh, Belinda Longhurst, who uh, is here with me, except she just said, I've got time to put eyeliner on, haven't I? And then, <laughs> looks, that, that looks yeah. like... Um, that looks like homeopathic Belinda is sitting <laughs> Much more powerful. Much more powerful. <laughs> That's a terrifying thought. Um, so, uh, do you want to wait for Bell to come back or does someone want to... No, no, out? you can crack um, on. I, I'm a person by myself. I'm a real boy. Uh, you, you sure are. <laughs> Let me remind myself what episode you did for us. It was episode 22. 
back on 25th of April, and it was on bad science, pseudoscience, logical was, fallacies. Was it not on homeopathy? Well, <laughs> it was going to be, and that one, that one didn't, uh, that one didn't really work out. But you know, didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever get anyone to come on to do that? Uh, it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. Hold on. Um, she now locked herself out. <laughs> yes, carry on. Uh, total pro. Total pro. Yeah, wait, wait. Oh, yes, she is. So, hi, Belle. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. Let, let's... So, Melinda did episode, episode seven, our dermatology episode, over 4,000 views, second second most viewed of our videos of all 49 so far um which surprises everyone for being honest no no it didn't really um so thanks <laughs> both for joining us i suppose we should probably just to stop the, the 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 lips from wagging too much we should probably explain exactly why you two are in a hotel room together in dublin we should you know, no, chat or, or... <laughs> yeah you're right let's leave it you're right let's leave it <laughs> Uh, JW, JW, Toby, what have you got for these two fine specimens? Toby, do you want to go first? I was just wondering, yeah, well, yeah, you can. I was just wondering if you have to work, both of you work especially hard to stay on brand all the time. Because I know what a big fan of Mark. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I hate you so very much. Um, yeah, uh, no, the, the, the whole brand thing is the ongoing joke with Toby and myself. <sighs> Not a brand! Not marketing. I don't do marketing. It's, You're a brand. Uh, yeah. Mar uh, but marketing for me is like your arsehole. You know it's necessary. <laughs> you know without it you die. But you don't have to enjoy it. You don't have to tell everyone about it. You don't have to think it's so great. So, you yes, don't no, enjoy okay. your arsehole, Rob. I don't believe that for one second. Um, who's <laughs> no, what a question the bell. Quick. Someone change subject. Quick. Oh, that, that went left field. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Belinda, <laughs> uh, yeah, we can do. I was going to actually ask you about forgotten feet. Okay, that's that's just as good. Yep. <laughs> yeah, go on. There, there you go. You got a minute. Crack on. About forgotten feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whatever you want to say. Uh, yeah, forgotten feet. We're, we're going great guns. We're now a registered charity <laughs> as of a few months ago, um, which is brilliant because that's going to open more doors of opportunity and, and donations, etc. And yeah, we've got 40 clinics across the UK set up, running, and more in the pipeline. And it's all going really good to those that need it the most. That was like 25 Excellent. seconds. Sorry. I've got a dumb question for you. Go on then. Oh. Um, if, we talked about this before. If, if skin cancer is caused by sun exposure, why do patients manifest acral lintigious mel melanoma on their feet? <laughs> Easy for you to say. Um, exactly. <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go back to Will and Kate. Boom. Oh, yeah, well, we're on the water here. There you go. Um, well, basically, up to the figure is around 40% of people that manifest melanoma have genetic mutations in their pigmented lesions. So it isn't always down to sun damage. So that's why the majority of those we see on the feet, in particular the plantar surface, which generally isn't exposed to the sun, we, we do get the melanoma forming there. So it's genetic. So therefore, it's all about history, history, history. And that will only ever come up if we routinely ask our patients, is there any history of melanoma in your family? It's a flag. Is it not a bit rude to keep going on about history like that? Do you reckon? I think <laughs> Stop it. Yeah, okay, look, thank, thanks guys. So we were conscious of time, so um, okay. we just brought Kylie on, so we'll put you thanks, back, guys. Into the, back, okay. into the, back into the green room. Thank you. Hey, Kylie. Hey, guys. How's the jet lag? Hi, Kylie. <laughs> jet, jet lag is um, still, unfortunately, very present, but it's getting better. It'll be fine <laughs> by next. Yeah, well, I'm jet lagged the I, other way, but there. Let's... I referred, uh, I referred to Craig about 15 minutes ago as a machine, and that the, the second sort of person in my life that I think about when it comes to just work ethic, demand, all corners of the globe, zero sleep is is you every single time. In fact, you and Craig are probably joint first in my in my life, as you know. So, um, thanks for joining us, and after 
I know you were teaching in Glasgow yesterday, down in Brighton today, and then I guess are you in Brighton still? Are you going straight from Brighton to Bournemouth? Because I know you're there next week for the for the conference as yeah. well. Yeah. So I'm working working again tomorrow at the Uni of Brighton, and then I've I've actually got a couple of days off. Um, what? I technically have a writing <laughs> retreat, so I'm going to try and pump out a couple of papers. Of course. So you haven't got a couple of days off, have you? No, that anyone else? Yeah. <laughs> got a go. couple of days off. That is exactly the Kylie I was talking about. That's amazing. <laughs> Who wants to ask this absolute legend the question? And to remind ourselves, Kylie did. She was episode three, Craig. Yeah, I think it was three. three. Yeah, three, yeah. Three, three or four. Three or four. So again, yet again, one of the people that made makes Podchat Live what it is because without those first, I keep saying it, without those first five or six episodes this thing does not continue. It doesn't exist. So thank you, Kylie. Yep. Someone ask the le- this legend a question. Kylie, I won't, I won't ask you about the bus journey last night. Uh, no. <laughs> the, the question was about idi- idiopathic toe walkers. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought you'd love that. I think I, I do. I, <laughs> yeah. And what are some of the key questions that you need to be answered for us to actually understand? The idiopathic toe walker or not as you clearly would say <laughs> because we just need to work out that they're not idiopathic there's a reason and there's something going on in these little kids brains and as podiatrists we keep being obsessed with their feet and we just need to calm it down <laughs> nice and straightforward yeah. so Answer. just to so the after that first uh, that, that episode four with with kylie um, i had a message from someone um, and they said to me, and I'll, I'll say it verbatim, and they said to me, you've just had one of the world leading experts on idiopathic toe walking on your chat show. And like a dick, you didn't ask her a single question about idiopathic toe walking. <laughs> and that was, re- that, that was very intentional because just before we went live, you sort of said, I remember you saying to us, I said, is there anything you don't want me to ask you about? You know, I don't, because obviously we, we did. We don't script these, as is quite abundantly clear, but uh, we also don't like to stitch people up. We also like to give them a chance to say what they, if there's a place they don't want to go, uh, particularly. And, and you were pretty clear that you were sick of talking about it back. That was back in sort of uh, December, about, you know, just about 12 months ago. So I'm really pleased that came up. I'm delighted. I feel like we've gone full circle. Um, I, I'll see. We'll see you next thing. week. You will. For see you Thursday, years, Kylie. No yeah. Okay. Look, great. Thanks, Kylie. I've, I've, we'll, um, give lots of time. I'll just move you back to the green room and got Jonathan here. Hey, Jonathan. <laughs> hey there, guys. How you doing? I know you've been hey, waiting. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's so, great, great to be sitting here as uh, somebody who's not a, a clinician or practitioner and, and listening to all this stuff. It kind of, a, it occurs to me that there's so many similarities between what you're trying or, or your approach to clinical excellence. And what I think should be probably your approach if you're in private practice to, um, to business excellence. And I, there's so many things that I, I always see these, these parallels. Um, you know, both, I think Jill and Debbie were talking about uh, people needing a community to be part of. And, uh, and then uh, there's somebody else talking about um, looking, at, looking at the actual results to be able to make decisions and... Uh, and I think in the, there's so many parallels in business where you, you need to be looking at what's actually happening in your business if you're in private practice and, uh, you know, being able to make decisions on all of that. And I think we all understand uh, intuitively through the way that we've had this approach to learning about um, how to be a, a great practitioner. Uh, and sometimes we, we look at our businesses and think, oh, yeah, well, we don't really need to pay so much attention to that. Um, and I think about my dad who had a fungal toenail and uh, he would have had that, I, I would say, for 15 years and he just put up with it. He, he didn't even really think, oh, look, there's a fungal toenail. It's just, it's just what happens uh, when you get older. And uh, I think some of us in our businesses, we, we go, oh, yeah, we just put up with that. We don't have to, to uh, think about fixing that. And there's often these pains in the business where we're, we're always – treating patients and helping them remove the pain. And then there's this massive pain uh, inside the practice on the business side of it or the business management side of it. And we think, oh, yeah, no, we just just uh, <laughs> let, that, let that slide. <laughs> yeah, no, interesting. So, 
interesting parallels. For, you, for anyone that didn't see Jonathan's episode, it was episode thirty-three back on the twelfth of July, and um, it was it was well, it was about business. It was about business marketing. It was obviously under the guise of it was it, the, the episode was called Podiatry Hive because that's obviously the company that Jonathan's company. And actually, Craig, it's just dawned on me for a real bit of fun here. We could have brought Jonathan and and uh, Bobby Isaacs on together. That would have been <laughs> that would that would have been fun. Um, <laughs> But anyway, I'm conscious of time. So, who has? Does anyone have a question for Jonathan? JW or? Um, I do. I do. Yeah. I'm leading on right. from what you're just saying, Jonathan. Um, what what generally do you see that a lot of private practices aren't doing that they should? Uh, you know what? I think it's actually the little things. Um, I I think that uh, we often think, oh, you know, we've got all this stuff happening in our practice, and we need to do this big project. And often what I like to take clients through is just, okay, looking at, go back to the, the basics. If you need more clients, you know, what, what small changes can you make inside your practice to get a few more leads? Is there something that you can actually adjust in the way that, you know, your website looks so that people actually click to make a booking or maybe the way that the, the receptionists are actually answering the phone to make sure that they book somebody in rather than just let them you know, ask how much does it cost to see the podiatrist um, and then they, they drop off. Or, you know, that, that's some of small things which actually uh, makes a big, big difference. And I remember I, I was listening, trawling through Ted the other day, listening to a guy who was actually a surgeon and he was explaining how uh, we, in, in surgery, you, you learn all this stuff and then you become an expert and, and a leading authority. And then that's it. That's the, the pedagogical way of, of doing it, where he compared that with sport and having a coach and the coach actually making minor adjustments. And he actually stood up and let a, a, another world-leading surgeon come in and uh, assess him, uh, being a world-leading surgeon himself, assess him and how he was actually doing and just seeing minor things that you could possibly adjust. And I guess that's, you know, if you're getting someone to come and help you with your business, look at all those many, many things, the, the one percenters, that uh, if you just make a minor change across all of those different areas, marketing, systems, looking at your plan, your team, all of that stuff, uh, and just and tightening everything up. So I, I guess that's uh, not, a, not a big thing, but uh, it's the sum of little things. Sure. Great. Look, thank, thanks, Jonathan. I know you've been waiting patiently in the green room, so we'll put you back, and we've just, I've just brought on Ryan and Trevor for... A dual act, but Trevor, we can't see your video. Yeah, it's just crack. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, oh, Trevor, that's fine. So, as a result, I ain't got any clothes on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, a result, it's, a, it's a result for us. Yeah. Uh, how, how, how are you, Craig? Yeah. <laughs> how, are, how are you doing, Ryan? You well, mate? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Good. Thank you. Good. You look like are you still at work? No, I was going to say I'm not long in, but I mean, sitting waiting here for about an hour and a half to get on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know, certainly, mate. Yeah. My video is crazy. We've only, got, we've only got one guest to go after this, so let's, we've got to start winding things up. We're getting, I've got to get the girls to school. <laughs> yes, so uh, we thought we'd bring you on together because we're, we're, you know, we know you know it, you guys know each other well anyway. And, um, there you go, you, Trevor. You, you know, oh, here yeah, we can see you. He put his clothes um, on. <laughs> look at him. Oh, <laughs> You're like a bunch of You're jokers, right. aren't you? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, Trevor, so, can't help you with the computer. Hey, shut up, Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'll, I'll kick off. But actually, because you got Ryan, go because I know you Trevor work with these guys, don't you? Because because you got Ryan and Trevor on at the same time. Where do you guys see uh, podiatric surgery going in the next ten years? Or where would, or, or I'll rephrase, where would you like to see it going in the next 10 years? Go on, big man. Um, I, I quite frankly, I, I don't like the division that uh, there seems to be that people are either forefoot surgeons or entire foot surgeons or foot and ankle surgeons. I personally would like to see that everyone treats either the whole foot or doesn't treat it at all. So um, I'd like to see a, a sort of a, an expansion in most people's uh, scope of practice. Uh, I personally would like to get involved in trauma, although that's a fairly controversial area. I'm not too sure how likely that's going to be or how hard or easy it'll be to crack into. But 
I personally like to see things push forward and um, so I suppose consolidate practice of the entire foot and ankle, really. Trev? I think we've got to look at, um, there's a slightly bigger picture. I mean, a lot of people practice autonomously. They don't have necessarily multi, uh, a, a team of people. I mean, everybody has junior members of the team, but I think the strengths in a number of consultants working together, and if you can't necessarily do that on site, then you team up with other hospitals. We kind of do that for the deanery, but oh, I'm right, is here. Um, oh, we kind it's of do like that. A surgery the episode, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> About time, mate. Um, we kind of do that through the deaneries, but I, th I think there's strength in numbers uh, and sorting and uh, you know supporting one another and uh, analysing how where we you know we all get mistakes and errors, right? And we need to sh we need to learn from those to make sure that we become stronger. And I think in this we end up having services that have more than one consultant. When that consultant leaves, there's a danger that the service finishes. Um, and in, any time we lose a service, it's a lot harder to start another one. Okay, and we've got, we've got Ian on board now. Ian, this, the same question to you. Actually, I don't think Ian might have caught the question at the beginning. Uh, he's also muted, Craig. Can you unmute him? Yeah, I've unmuted him. Hey, Ian, did you, did you hear the question at the just before no okay, go again it, it was he was he was asking whether you're still putting sparkles in the nails that you paint yeah, someone, someone's got <laughs> their facebook, someone's got their audio someone's got their audio on facebook can you mute your facebook that'll be riley yeah that'll be Riley. let's get facebook off okay that's good can you hear me no, yeah. oh, sorry uh, um, toby what was the question nothing to do with me <laughs> Ian, it was where, where would you like to see podiatric surgery going in the next 10 years? Um, first off, to get a doctorate so that we actually have some proper reciprocity. Then we need to increase in numbers of units. We've got 60, 70 pod surgeons. There's too few of us. We need to become mainstream, um, like orthopedic surgeons. That They're in every district general hospital. Um, we all need to be prescribing. We all need to be doing a bigger scope of practice. Ryan, I think you mentioned that. We don't need to just be doing good bunion surgery. We need to be doing good surgery and lots of it. And we should be the go-to surgical profession. Fantastic. Wonderful. Yeah. We, um, haven't had a, we haven't had a surgery episode, Craig. I know. Yeah. But I just, this, want, I, just counts, to say, I just wanted to say something to Ian. Um, I've been following your uh, YouTube page. Some really awesome content going on there for those that haven't. Um, oh. Yeah, really, really lots of, you know, you're doing a lot of videos. <laughs> I'm slightly embarrassed that somebody's seen that, actually. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> when does the Sparkles video go up? Um, oh, Dave's here. Oh, Hi, Dave. yes. Um, hello, David. Yes. Um, yeah, so there's a question. So is so is cosmetic podiatry podiatry? Oh, so God, thanks for coming, me. everyone. Thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah. Episode fifty, a wrap. Happy fiftieth episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. sorry. Hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. So look, I'm re really, really conscious of the time. I've just brought Dave on, so I'll just move you guys back to the the green room. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for waiting patiently. Oops. Yeah, so how's it going, James? It's all good, mate. How are you? Yeah, no. Just about ready. Hello, mate. Got to get out the door to take the girls to school in a minute, but yeah. Another, if I, my, my picture serves me correctly, another absolute atrocity of a Movember there. Um, <laughs> so thanks for that. Just because you're a boy and you can't grow facial hair, don't take it out on it. <laughs> any hair, any hair whatsoever. Thanks, you've got, you are the last, is, am I right in saying DJ yep. is the last? Dave's the last, guess, yep. So. Thank, Thank you. you for waiting. Thank no, you for waiting so patiently, Dave. We, well, it, it, bad for you if you've been waiting for an hour and 10 minutes <laughs> for, to get about 60 seconds of airtime. But yeah, um, which one of uh, you chaps who's clearly enjoying your hosting? You know, it's, you know that your hosting is about to wrap up. You've got to make this one count. It's the last few minutes. Who's, who's, who's pitching a question to DJ? Go on, JW. Dave, yeah. Dave, uh, well, go on, Toby, did you have one? No. <laughs> so he's waited for an hour and a half. Dave, and no got a question for him, <laughs> Dave. Dave, it was more more along the lines of the because you you were on the episode with um, social media and things like that. Um, 
and, and great work with your recent video and what else is to come with that well that that video because podiatrists generally don't follow instructions um despite being <laughs> told exactly what to do they do completely the opposite so there's probably going to be another two videos coming out of that um, with some serious editing to, to get the flavor. It's all, all about podiatry stories, as far as I'm concerned, because people, people buy from people. Um, I don't want to mention marketing again, but people do buy from people. So if we can share the stories of what, of, of what podiatrists do and what they enjoy about it, it makes us more approachable. So there's a couple of videos to come out of that. I think the one word video went down very well, and I think there could be a, an episode two of that as well. I've had some people approach me on that, so I think we'll probably run that again. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the reach on that's been, been great and people have been sharing it. And it's been absolutely fantastic. I, I've, 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 had friends, I've had friends who, who aren't podiatrists who have watched that and, thought, and said how great they thought it was. Mm. I yeah, think it, partially because it, it mocked me as well. <laughs> you, you were brilliant. I, I, you know, I watched the, the video of, of you over and over again, and I tell you, there's so much more to come of that one. It's, hello, fellow podiatrist. I'm sat here by the fire. It is just, oh, it's genius. It's great. I, I'm uh, going to do uh, that. Okay. okay. Look, yeah, I, I, I'll do a quick share of the screen. See, I got sent this today and saying that this is what I look like. Close your porn first, quick. <laughs> 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 um, actually, we, we we need to wind up in a minute. You got that other picture picture there, James? You oh yeah, yeah, yeah. One yeah, more yeah, picture yeah. to share. Look over my shoulder. Yeah. Oh, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. I was waiting till you had a bit, but if you wait a second, Ian, just for everyone who's still watching. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. so I, I was challenged quite late last night by James, he said, he said, that picture of Griff with the curtains, where was it? Can yeah. you find it for me? And yeah. sent me off to find it, so I had to track it down. Sure. Yeah, I get to track it down, and there it was when you opened your phone, right there, that first <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, it's my <laughs> so, right, look, I think what, what we need to do is start winding it up. So for those of you who have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, um, we're on 570 subscribers. Is that less than right? 580, so we need 10 more to get ahead that of That is an utter <laughs> outrage, an utter outrage. I know, but I just also wanted to share, this is the back end of our podcast. Um, this is how many plays we've had on our podcasts. You know, almost 10,000, you know, which was really quite extraordinary. Um, so, you know, they're on iTunes and um, everyone else. So, look, thanks, everyone. There's a few guests in the green room still hanging around to watch. So, look, thanks, everyone, for coming on. Sorry we're going to give everyone a few minutes. So, it's... Um, well done, Toby. Well done, James. Yeah. Um, Craig and Ian, just before you, before you cut everyone off, Toby and I wanted to say a massive thank you to you guys. You say thank you to all the guests every week. And actually, and I think everyone in the green room is clapping just like Dave was, in the, <laughs> the resource that you've brought out over these 50 episodes is incredible. So, yeah. <laughs> great. Thanks, mate. Thank you very thank much. You're right. That is the first time that anyone's ever said thank you. It feels really nice. I like it. I like yeah. how it feels. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys.